formative years, and scholarly pursuits. Elmo Russell Zumwalt Jr. came into the world in San Francisco, California. The progeny of Elmo Russell Zumwalt and Francis Pearl Zumwalt, both esteemed country doctors. Francis, his mother, hailed from a Jewish lineage, her parents being Julius and Sarah Frank of Burlington, Vermont. However, the Zumwalt household adhered to Christian beliefs, a choice that led to Francis' estrangement from her Jewish parents, a consequence of marrying outside her faith. The Zumwalt clan relocated to Tulare, California, shaping the backdrop of Elmo Russell Zumwalt Jr.'s early years. His educational journey commenced at Tulare Union High School, where academic excellence crowned him valedictorian. Notably, Zumwalt also attained the distinguished status of an Eagle Scout, earning the coveted Distinguished Eagle Scout Award from the Boy Scouts of America, an early testament to his dedication to leadership and community service. Post his tenure at Tulare Union High School, Zumwalt progressed to Rutherford Preparatory School in Long Beach, California, further fortifying the bedrock of his educational odyssey. Naval Odyssey and Wartime Valor Elmo Russell Zumwalt Jr.'s initial aspirations to tread the medical path, mirroring his parents, underwent a seismic shift in 1939. The tide of destiny carried him to a different calling when he secured admission into the United States Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland. As a midshipman at the USNA, Zumwalt etched a distinguished narrative. He assumed leadership roles, serving as the president of the Trident Society, vice president of the Quarterdeck Society, and clinching victory in the June Week public speaking contest consecutively in 1940 and 1941. Engaging in intercollegiate debating, he ascended to the post of company commander in 1941 and held the esteemed position of regimental three-striper in 1942. Zumwalt, graduating with distinction, was commissioned as an ensign on June 19, 1942, earning an honorary degree from Texas Tech University in tandem. Post-graduation, Zumwalt's naval surgeon embarked aboard the USS Phelps, a destroyer. In August 1943, Phelps was detached for instructional duties at the Operational Training Command Pacific in San Francisco. Transitioning to the USS Robinson in January 1944, Zumwalt's valor during the battle for Letter Gulf against Japanese battleships earned him the Bronze Star Medal with a valor device. Specifically recognized for his heroic service as evaluator in the Combat Information Center on October 25, 1944. As the curtains fell on World War II in August 1945, Zumwalt continued his service until December 8, 1945, as the prize crew officer of the Ataka. This 1,200-ton Japanese river gunboat, manned by a crew of 200, became the first American-controlled ship since the outbreak of World War II. Navigating the vessel up the Huangpu River to Shanghai, China, Zumwalt played a pivotal role in restoring order and disarming the Japanese, an indelible chapter in his early naval legacy. Command Mastery and Strategic Roles Elmo Russell Zumwalt Jr.'s trajectory in command assignments showcased his strategic prowess and leadership acumen. Post-World War II, Zumwalt assumed the role of executive officer aboard the destroyer USS Sawfleet and later the USS Zellars where he held positions as executive officer and navigator from March 1946. January 1948 marked a shift to the Naval Reserve Officers Training Corps unit at the University of North Carolina, where he remained until June 1950. In June 1950, Zumwalt took command of the USS Tills, a destroyer escort initially in reserve status. Fully activating the USS Tills at Charleston Naval Shipyard on November 21, 1950, Zumwalt continued his command until March 1951. Transitioning to the battleship USS Wisconsin as navigator in March 1951, Zumwalt contributed to operations during the Korean War. Post-USS Wisconsin, he attended the Naval War College in Newport, Rhode Island, from June 1952. By June 1953, Zumwalt became the head of the shore and overseas bases section at the Bureau of Naval Personnel, Navy Department, Washington, D.C. During this tenure, he assumed roles as an officer and enlisted requirements officer and engaged in work related to Medicare legislation. Following the Bureau of Naval Personnel stint, Zumwalt commanded the destroyer USS Arnold J. 
Isbell from July 1955. Leading the ship through two deployments with the United States 7th Fleet, he earned commendations for battle efficiency and excellence awards in engineering, gunnery, anti-submarine warfare, and operations. Returning to the Bureau of Naval Personnel in July 1957, Zumwalt later moved to the Office of the Assistant Secretary of the Navy, Personnel and Reserve Forces in December 1957, serving as a Special Assistant for Naval Personnel until August 1959. He played a pivotal role in strategic decision-making. Ordered to command the USS Dewey in December 1959, Zumwalt led the ship, the first guided missile frigate built from the keel up until June 1961, earning several awards during his tenure. From June 1962 to June 21, 1965, Zumwalt served in various roles, including as a desk officer for France, Spain, and Portugal. His responsibilities extended to directorial roles, such as arms control and contingency planning for Cuba at the Office of the Assistant Secretary of Defense, International Security Affairs, Washington, D.C. Additionally, he served as Executive Assistant and Senior Aide to the Honorable Paul H. Nitz, Secretary of the Navy, from December 1963 to June 21, 1965, garnering the Legion of Merit for his commendable service. Zumwalt's journey through these varied command roles reflected his adeptness in steering naval operations and contributing significantly to strategic planning. Flag Assignments, Vietnam and Chief of Naval Operations Vietnam Command, after being selected for the rank of Rear Admiral, Zumwalt assumed command of cruiser destroyer Flotilla 7 on July 24, 1965, in San Diego. From August 1966 to August 1968, he served as the Director of the Systems Analysis Division, OPNAV, OP-96. In September 1968, Zumwalt became the Commander Naval Forces Vietnam and Chief of the Naval Advisory Group. United States Military Assistance Command Vietnam, MACV. His responsibilities included overseeing brown water forces, such as the flotilla of swift boats patrolling the coasts, harbors, and rivers of Vietnam. Notably, among the swift boat commanders were his son, Elmo Russell Zumwalt III, and future Senator and Secretary of State John Kerry. Zumwalt's forces encompassed Task Force 115, Coastal Surveillance Force, Task Force 116, River Patrol Force, and Task Force 117, Joint Army-Navy Mobile Riverine Force. Chief of Naval Operations, President Richard Nixon nominated Zumwalt for the position of Chief of Naval Operations in April 1970. Prior to assuming this role, he was relieved of his duties as Commander Naval Forces Vietnam on May 15, 1970, and received a second Navy Distinguished Service Medal for exceptionally meritorious service. Zumwalt officially became Chief of Naval Operations on July 1, 1970, with a promotion to full admiral. In this capacity, he implemented significant reforms to address issues of racism and sexism in the Navy. His directives, known as Z-grams, were communicated Navy-wide and included measures such as authorizing beards and introducing beer dispensing machines to barracks. Under Zumwalt's leadership, the Mod Squad, comprising Destroyer Squadron 26 and later 31, was introduced to provide promising young officers with early command experience. Billets in the Mod Squad held a rank lower than usual. Additionally, Zumwalt made substantial changes to the Navy's ship procurement plan, called High-Low, which aimed to balance the purchase of high-end, nuclear-powered vessels with low-end, cheaper ones. Despite facing resistance, especially from Admiral Hyman Rickover, Zumwalt proposed four types of warships for this plan. However, only the Pegasus class of missile patrol boats and the Oliver Hazard Perry class of guided missile frigates were realized. Zumwalt retired from the Navy on July 1, 1974, at the age of 53, leaving a lasting impact on the Navy's culture and operational strategies. Death and Legacy Elmo Zumwalt passed away on January 2, 2000, at the age of 79, at the Duke University Medical Center in Durham, North Carolina, due to mesothelioma. His funeral service was held at the Naval Academy Chapel. President Bill Clinton, in his eulogy, referred to Zumwalt as the conscience of the United States Navy. 
In recognition of some Walt's significant contributions to the Navy, the United States Navy's DDX guided missile destroyer program was named the Zumwalt class. The lead ship of this class, USS Zumwalt, DDG-1000, follows Navy tradition in bearing his name. In 2013, the Mesothelioma Center for Excellence at the West Los Angeles VA Medical Center was renamed the Elmo Zumwalt Treatment and Research Center. This center specializes in mesothelioma research, with a particular focus on veterans who may have been exposed to asbestos during their military service. Elmo Zumwalt's legacy endures through these tributes and the lasting impact of his reforms and leadership on the United States Navy. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share it. Your support is greatly appreciated, and you can find details on how to support my channels through PayPal in the description box below.